Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, when I did the 15-minute Gene Steel Occultist, I was not expecting the reaction that got. Uh, it turns out there was a fair few dads, especially, coming into the comments to say that this was exactly the sort of thing they were looking for. So I figured, would it be cool to do some more in that vein? You know, absolute bare minimum style painting. Uh, there are some other channels out there that do very good examples of this, and just while he springs to mind, go check out Luke's APS here on YouTube as well, because he'll show you some other fantastic tricks for getting these guys out as quickly as he can. But how would I do it? And therein lies the question. So let's have some fun with this, and we'll crack open, first of all, Alma Craig Blue. Paints are going to be in the description below. Feel free to follow along. Now, what we'll start off with is a technique called overbrushing, where you're using it similarly to dry brushing. You just want more paint left on your brush. You'll see I'm really looking just for patchy, blip, 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 enough that I've got some color on the brush. And then I'm going to grab my intercessor and let's start from the back where you can see some of this detail. You want to try and put this on in a slight circular motion so that you're kind of not catching the deeper areas of color. Now, when it first goes on, you'll see it's quite patchy and awful, like I said. And in some areas, you're going to find you don't really want to do the circular wiggle. It takes a bit of takes a bit of practice. But what you'll see is that after a couple of passes, you start building up that blue. You will need a little bit more paint than that. Jeez, come on. And after a couple of passes round, your whole marine is going to look like this, with that shading in the background. But the armor itself is that nice McCrag blue. So I'm going to go around the whole model now and do that everywhere. Now, if you're finding some areas are still a little bit patchy, they're not covering properly, what you can do is wait five minutes, come back and give it another pass. This is a particularly useful method if you are batch painting. So doing a whole bunch of Marines in one go works pretty well. But you'll see we've still got that black tone in the recesses, so we've got some shading there. Now what we're going to do is a real careful dry brush, and we'll get some highlighting. So I've got here Cronus Blue. Ordinarily, I would highlight a little bit lighter with Ultramarines, but I think because this is going to be a slightly darker blue overall, this Cronus Blue will do the job. So, like always, get most of the paint off your brush, and then just checking on the edge of the base there what you're going to leave behind. Just lightly drag it along some areas where you want to accentuate the edge of the armor. You don't have to be particularly generous with this. And it does pay if you're a little sparing in some areas. But across the top of his helmet, for example, is a good one. Uh, the back of his arms. Any... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to concentrate and, and paint at the same time. Anywhere that there's a hard edge that you want to accentuate, make it stand out a little bit more from that blue, you can add some Cronus Blue, just like that. Now the trick with dry brushing is always to start with less than you think you've got on the brush. You know, be gentle with it because you can always add more paint. But once you've put the paint on, taking it off is a different story. So I've got now my Retributor Armor, and we're going to do the gold on the Marine. Now this is probably the most time-consuming part. Uh, get yourself a smaller brush, and I always find it easiest to come at it at a downward angle to the trim itself. So if your brush sort of heads forward, uh, you're going to end up sort of just sliding over the detail and not hitting the central shoulder pad. The Retributor Armor does cover very well, but we are covering over a dark blue. So you're probably going to find you do want to come back in some places and give this a second coat. So anywhere that you can't sort of get the old tricky bit in, uh, <laughs> spend some time, be careful with it, and just fill it in as best you can. Any areas that you're not too confident on, don't worry, because that's what you're going to see from the front. Um, I have gone over a little bit there. If I want to tidy this up, I could grab just a little bit of black and uh, actually just fill in the gap in the old shoulder pad there. But I'm not going to worry too much about it because, like I said, no one's going to see it. Now, speaking of not seeing it, a lot of people are always asking, how do I paint the eagle on the chest? Well, don't. <laughs> uh, the reason why I do the gold at this step is kind of twofold. 
what I'm going to do is actually paint a little bit on the front, mostly where we can see. And you'll notice as I'm dragging my brush, I'm likely to hit the trim on the shoulder pad. So it being gold, that's not a problem. If I wanted to do a different color, I would do the gold on the chest eagle first. Now, if you're finding that you've got a marine where it's difficult to do that, tip him upside down, attack him from a different angle. And all you need to do is really just get the areas that you're going to see regularly. Uh, if you can't see it, don't paint it, don't bother, because we are on a mission to get this dude on the table. So, like I said, just moving him around every which way I need to, and taking care not to hit the blue. If I hit his shoulder pad like I have here, it doesn't matter. And same too with his gun, because we are going to paint that in a little bit. Now, after a couple of coats of that gold, there's our marine. And as you can see, I have gone in whoops, a couple of spots, but we'll tidy that up later. I do want to show you how you can do that. I've got now my lead belcher though, and let's just go around a little bit more, ooh, a little bit more water in my paint there. And all of the metallic bits, you can paint these in now. This is not too difficult. Uh, as always, you just want to avoid areas that you have already painted. So your gold and your blue. If you do get it on the gold though, don't worry, you can cover it over, you know, get some retributor armor out again. But do always try and paint away from the blue if you can, because you don't want to have to fix that up in too many spots. Now there's as much of this as you would like on the model. You know, silver is how much you want to add. So I like doing sort of the rings on the little backpack section there. I like doing those in silver. You might want to leave them black. You might want to paint the whole bobble thingy <laughs> in silver, but that's your call. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint in the black over, you know, the bits that we want to be black. So a bolter casing and so forth. And I'm going to do most of that off screen. What I do want to quickly show you though is, if you notice, I'm watering down my black a lot more than I normally would. I've got a small layer brush. I'm just going to run a little bit of this thinned out black just into the recess of the shoulder pad there which is gonna fix up any uh, issues I've had with my sloppy fingers. <laughs> and you'll see it does actually give quite a nice bit of definition. Like if you like the look of it, then you can do it all the way around all the shoulder pads. So I'm gonna have a go now finishing that off and then I will paint in all of the black with a little bit more paint. Now once this bolter casing is blacked in, along with things like joints in his armor and his leather equipment, what you can do is finish off any last details, and this is normally going to be something like purity seals. So I've got here my Rakarth flesh. And then just a little screamer pink to fill in the wax. And grab your old medium layer brush and some non-oil. And you're going to go over all of the metal. And while that's drying, you can get a little Agrax Earthshade and go over the purity seals. Now at the same time, you may want to put a little bit of this over the gold on the chest eagle to get some definition there. It is your choice, and I figure better to show you how it will look. Personally, I would probably swap in for something like a uh, Reichland Flesh Shade or something here. Got just a little bit of this. There we go. And again, you can tilt your model as you need to <laughs> in order to reach those areas. Now, if there's anywhere that you think it's gone a little too dark, like particularly on the uh, purity seal, you can go back to the original color and just highlight around the edges. Uh, I quite like how that turned out, so I'm not going to bother with that, but your results may vary. You can touch that up a little if you fancy. What we'll do now is what everybody likes to refer to as the hard part. We're going to paint the eyes. This doesn't have to be too difficult. What I've got here is my fist on red and my small layer brush. And I'm just twirling along and just having a look on my palette, what kind of a line I'm going to leave behind and how easy this paint's going to come off the brush, because that's important. Well, let's get up good and close. It doesn't look so pretty from up here. <laughs> uh, but let's get a little bit of paint. And what you want to do, instead of trying to paint in the whole socket, I find it's easiest to just paint a little line. You may find it's easier to go back over it a few times, like I'm doing, just to brighten up and strengthen that color. But there it is. And let's do the other eye. Same thing again. 
Just a little bit of red. Oh, geez. Well, not to worry. We can fix that. So there is the eyes painted. Now let's fix that mess. Even if you aren't planning on edge highlighting your miniature, it's handy to have the colors to do it because it'll help you to fix up little issues <laughs> like our ice blotch here. I've got some Calgar blue, and this would normally be what we'd use to highlight the armor. You'll see it might stand out a little bit, but as it dries, there we go, jobs are good. And if you fancy, you can use the dry brush as a guide just to put a few little extra highlights on, but that's up to you. I'm really just having a bit of fun now, so I'll stop playing with that and <laughs> we'll crack on. Now there is one last step that I'm going to go through for the painting on this, and it's optional, let's say, <laughs> but I strongly suggest pick yourself up a can of Munitorum varnish, because what we're going to do is varnish them, and that's going to change how the blue looks. Now some people will tell you that you don't need to varnish a plastic miniature, and from a protective standpoint, to, to keep everything intact with your painting, that's probably true. But what we're looking to do with it is actually change how the light interacts with our blue on the miniature. It's going to make it look a little more rich. So we'll go from this to this. So I strongly recommend <laughs> it is worth picking up. You'll see the light just reflects a little bit more. You get that nice semi-satin finish. I like how that works. All right, it's a little bit nicer in person too, because it hasn't got the light shining directly off it like I do on the camera here, but you'll see how it looks, okay? Do pick it up. So now let's quickly knock a base on them. I've got here some Armageddon dust, which is the old texture paint. So it's kind of like a sandy mess. You can find all sorts of different types of things like this. Uh, you can even use PVA and a bit of sand if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna pop this on because it's nice and quick. Now, after about 20 minutes drying time, we'll get some Cera from Sepia and just pop that over the top. You may want to use Agrax Earthshade, but I like the slightly more warm tone that uh, Cera from Sepia is going to give us over this stuff. And then to finish off, just a quick dry brush of Tyrant's Skull. You can be quite sparing with this. And again, this is one I recommend in your toolbox for a bunch of reasons. It's handy for a few things, especially basing like this. I'm after tidying up the ring of his base with a little black and adding just a couple of tufts for a bit of character, our marine is done. And if you were counting along at home, <laughs> he took me 20 minutes. Well, probably closer to 18, but let's just say 20 for a nice round number. He's not going to win competitions, but that's not the point of him. I reckon once you've got the decals on, this fella's actually going to look to business. I'm quite pleased with how he turned out. I'd put him on the table, I'd put him in my army. All I gotta do is those decals and he's ready to rock and roll. There's plenty you can do from here to bring him up a little bit. If you wanted to, like I said, add a little bit more edge highlighting using the dry brush as a guide, uh, you could highlight some of these areas like the gold or the silver, but that's up to you. As far as getting those easy wins, getting a Marine finished on the table and he's got all of the details painted in, easy stuff guys. And I really think this is a great way for someone just getting into the hobby to have a play around and develop some skills. You know, learning how a brush just moves in your hand is a big, it's a big deal. I think anyway. <laughs> so as ever, guys, hopefully something there was interesting to you. As always, you can drop a comment in the old box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.